Hello everyone, it's Museum Week, it's Technology Day and the perfect opportunity to share another video from the interiors of Abbotsford. And today we're in a space that you might never have seen before. This actually sits within our Hope Scott Wing, but it is originally part of the old house. It was on the footprint of Scott's uh, glass house or conservatory room and was later reconfigured during the, the 1850s extension work as a library space and it was then known as Lockhart's Library, the home of the book collection of Scott's biographer and his son-in-law. And what I wanted to do today is show you one of our artworks in this space. It's a great painting, um, fantastic story behind it and I really hope you enjoy it. One of the most special things about Hope Scott Wing is that it's an accommodation space principally furnished with material from a historic collection. Now because of the date of the wing and it being established in the early Victorian period, a lot of the material that you're seeing around you fits very much those times. And actually the house was occupied right up until 2004, so we do have some more modern pieces in the collection in particular areas for you to see too. However, there were a quantity of oil paintings in the original house in Scott's home that don't now have a natural authentic place within the interiors that we have open to the public on the ground floor of the old house. And so what we've decided to do alongside um, showing this material periodically in our visitor centre exhibition space is to dress the Hope Scott Wing with some of these artworks so that people can enjoy them in a different way. And the painting that we're going to have a closer look at today is right above my head. Let's take a look. What I'll do is periodically turn a temporary uh, spotlight onto certain areas and we'll keep any external light sources down so we don't get the glare from the, uh, the varnish reflection. And we'll have a little look now at what seems to be going on in the image. So this chap will hopefully look familiar to you. There's Scott himself. He's seated. He's looking fairly contemplative. And if I turn my light on, you can see that he is sitting there looking ahead into the middle distance, accompanied by lots of accoutrements at his side. There are some uh, manuscripts and books there. There's a vase, um, a, a targe, a shield there, um, a huge weighty tome um, such as might contain records and deeds and things. He's there with his walking stick and he's wearing his um, sort of brown jacket there, an ochre coloured chair. And he's looking towards this chap who hopefully you can see clearly there has a pallet in his hand, um, looks considerably older than Scott. But hopefully you can see the canvas there. So he's actually in the act of painting his portrait. And this is a very clever painting because you're effectively enjoying two different depictions of Scott from varying angles, um, posing for a picture and what ends up on the canvas itself. And the artist is wearing um, what would be referred to as a, a Titian cap um, of red velvet there. And really, you know, Titian, one of the master painters, he's setting himself up as the creme de la creme of portrait painters. He's making a statement there and choosing to wear that. And then around him, you can just about see these ghosts of other canvases around the place. There's actually one behind Scott. And this is because this wasn't painted here at Abbotsford. This was painted in London. And it looks about half finished. You can see there the, the lower half of the canvas doesn't contain much in the way of detail yet. So the artist here is a man called James Northcote and he was a pupil and a follower of the great portrait painter Sir Joshua Reynolds. And Reynolds actually makes a really interesting appearance in this painting. And when we look at this, think again about Northcote sporting that Titian cap and making his statement. And when we look up above Scott's head, you can make out one other canvas. It's the only other one that we can see pretty clearly in the painting. There's a young girl who has her, her beloved puppy or pet dog in an affectionate stranglehold. She's called Jane Bowles, 
And this is an actual famous painting by Reynolds called Love Me, Love My Dog. And the fact that it appears in the same canvas very much casts Northcote in the same light of aspiration and ambition. So let's go from artist to premier writer. Let's have a closer look at Scott again here. And I said contemplative at the beginning, and I'd be really interested to hear what you think. To me, he looks a tad weary. And if you're one of those people that um, rolls your eyes when a family member asks for a picture, I know a few in my orbit, then spare a thought for Sir Walter Scott. He was sitting for portraits um, very, very regularly. And sitting to be painted was a you know, a, a slow and quite tedious process. Um, now, this painting was actually painted in 1828 in London, in May, and his sitting seemed to have gone on for about three or four days, and Scott's patience um, seemed to wear ever thinner as time went on. Wasn't a well man by that stage in his life. Um, so I wonder whether this slightly irritable, look in his eye could possibly capture that. This particular composition and the uh, toing and froing involved was recorded in Scott's journal and two of my favourite phrases that Scott uses as he talks about his impressions of Northcott in his studio and, and spending time with him was um, that Northcott was an old wizard and you know, bear in mind that Northcote was, he'd been born in 1746, so he wasn't actually far from the end of his life. Um, so his slightly grizzled features, they're doing rather well under the circumstances. But the other phrase is that he behaved like an animated mummy, um, which was one of those things when I read that sort of made me guffaw. I thought, how terribly unkind, but as ever with Scott in his private journal or gurnal, it's a, a safe space for him to vent what he's feeling about um, the trials and tribulations of celebrity. You know, it, it doesn't come easy to all and there's no respite from it. But stop the press. This wasn't painted by James Northcote at all. Yes, the original image of Scott sitting there in Northcote's studio was, but actually this is a different version by another artist called John Cause. So what we're seeing, if you can bear with me, is an image of Scott sitting for a painting that as far as I can gather doesn't exist, and what we have is this third-party rendition of another artist's self-portrait of himself in the act of painting, one of the most famous sitters you could hope to have in your studio. Just think about it, having a copy of a painting, celebrating the process of being painted, it speaks volumes about the, the, the cult of the image of Scott and just how prevalent it was in his lifetime and later too. I think this is one of those canvases where the more you look, the more you see. It's an absolute treat and I really hope you've enjoyed it.